Today on PCR, we take a look at how your county government is run from the top down as we welcome for the first time ever County Manager Scott Elliott as our special guest. Also, PCR gives you an in-depth look at one new program the Sheriff's Office is implementing that most certainly will save lives. That's all coming up on this special episode of the Pitt County Review. Hello and welcome to PCR. I'm your host, Kiara Jones, Director of Public Information and Media Relations for Pitt County. Here is always to keep you informed about the functions and services of your county government. While we're working our way into the heat of summer here in Pitt County, and while you may be ready for a week at the beach, we're here working hard to ensure that Pitt County remains a leader in the services we provide. That's why later we'll sit down with the man who leads us in that effort, Pitt County Manager Scott Elliott. But before we do that, we'll send it over to the PCR Information Room, where Katie Moniak has the latest in county news. Katie? Thanks, Kiara. Well, they say breakfast is the most important meal of the day, and for our local lawmakers, one breakfast in particular could be the most important meal of the year. On April 30th, the Pitt County Board of Commissioners once again held their annual legislative breakfast, an event in which they meet with our legislative delegation to discuss Pitt County's legislative goals and objectives with our elected state representatives before the start of the next legislative session in Raleigh. Along with great food, several points of discussion were on the table this year ranging from topics like revenue base, transportation issues, and even animal control guidelines. State Representative Brian Brown, who this year marked his second time attending the breakfast, reflected back on the gains he's personally seen as a result of these meetings. I think they're very effective and what you actually see is, is as you talk to other legislators and you start to build kind of that legislative agenda if you will, a lot of the county initiatives parallel each other. Um, if you go and, and get the, the legislative agenda book that he has laid out there, you would find that I would, I would assume the majority of their legislative priorities align with other county legislative priorities, which works really well. So, you know, everyone is really concerned about the same thing, so we're really able to kind of work in conjunction with each other to, to make the priorities happen for the counties. This makes the fourth year in a row PCR has brought you coverage of the Legislative Breakfast. If you'd like to do a look back of your own, you can find all of our previous episodes online via our YouTube and Peg Central websites. And speaking of elected officials, the month of May kicked off with some pretty big decisions as far as who those elected officials are. The 2014 primary elections were held on Tuesday, May 6, with about 15% of total registered Pitt County voters showing up to cast their ballot. Depending on where they lived, voters placed their choices on one of 30 different ballots that represented contested seats in all areas of government, from local seats all the way to U.S. congressional and senatorial candidates. If you would like to see the results of these elections for yourself, they are available to view online by visiting the Board of Elections page on our website. Simply go to pittcountync.gov slash DEPTS slash elections. There you'll not only find the local but statewide election results as well. You can also learn more about the department and the role it serves in our community. And now for your Board of Commissioners update. Every year in late May and early June, the Board engages in the budget process for the upcoming fiscal year. We want to take this opportunity to remind citizens that in addition to their original airing live on Pitt TV, any and all parts of the process from budget workshops to public hearings and passage can be seen online as well as purchased in DVD form. To view them online, simply go to our website and click the Pitt TV link at the bottom of the page. This will take you to our Peg Central Video Player website. You can also visit youtube.com slash Pitt County Government and look for it on the Commissioner's Meetings playlist on our channel page. DVD copies are available at a cost of $5 per copy and are usually ready the same day or the next day from order. For all questions regarding the availability of any board meeting, you can always just call the Office of Public Information at 902-2955. Between the budget workshops in May and approval of the budget in June, funding is the subject on a lot of minds this time of year. We at PCR would like to take this opportunity to remind you of ways you can learn more about the budget process of your county government. 
In the fall of 2013, the Office of Public Information released the informative video Budget Breakdown. Throughout its 12 and a half minute runtime, Deputy County Manager and Financial Officer Dwayne Holder takes viewers on a guided tour throughout the entire budget process, from conception to approval. The video was produced in response to inquiries about how the budget process works during the 2013-2014 budget process last spring. Currently, the budget breakdown can be seen online via our YouTube and PEG Central websites. Simply go to the search bar and type budget breakdown. DVD copies can also be purchased from the Office of Public Information for $5 per copy. For more information on where to find these videos online or to purchase a DVD copy, you can call the Office of Public Information at 902-2955. And finally, in this month's Employee Spotlight, we feature one department manager who is again taking top honors amongst his peers. For three of the last six years in which John Dimery has served as Director of Solid Waste and Recycling, Pitt County has ranked number one per capita in recycling in North Carolina. Recently, we added to our state-level honors when Pitt County took home the Local Government Award during the fourth annual Carolina Recycling Association Conference. The CRA, a nonprofit group of over 300 waste reduction and recycling organizations across North and South Carolina, presents the award each year to local governments with successful recycling and waste reduction programs. In addition to the award, this year, Demery was also named to the Board of Directors for the association. So in honor of the high marks you bring to Pitt County and the high praise you receive from your peers, we shine this month's employee spotlight on you, John Demery. That does it for this edition of the news. Back to you, Kiara. Thanks, Katie. Once again, we're getting a top-down view of how Pitt County government works. Stay tuned because coming up next, we sit down with Pitt County Manager Scott Elliott. Hey, did you miss your favorite Pitt TV programming? Then check out Pitt TV on YouTube. Your social media access for the informative and educational programming you'll find airing on Pitt TV. Just scroll down to find the latest videos produced by the Pitt County Office of Public Information. Can't find what you're looking for? Simply use the search option to locate any video that has been previously posted. Don't forget to click the subscribe icon at the top of the page so you can receive the latest video updates from Pitt County Government. Thanks for watching Pitt TV on YouTube. Empower you. Welcome back. As we mentioned earlier, May and June are a very busy time for us here at Pitt County Government. This is a critical time when we are hard at work forming, revising, and approving the upcoming budget for our next fiscal year. With all the effort currently being put forth, we thought it would be a great time to step back and get a good look at the big picture. Well, no position has a better view of our overall outlook than that of county manager, which is why we were so excited when earlier Scott Elliott joined us as our in-studio guest for the very first time. Scott, thanks so much for joining us today. My pleasure. Well, for those who are not familiar with you, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and what you do as county manager? Well, Kiara, as the county manager for Pitt County, I'm appointed by the Pitt County Board of Commissioners who would normally sit here behind us at, at the um, podium. And as county manager, I'm responsible for running the county, basically, um, basically a conglomeration of departments, some who are officials are appointed, some who are elected, and others who are hired as regular department heads. Um, it's my responsibility back to the board to make sure that any policies or directives or ordinances any mandates that they set out that they're put into place and that they're um, rendered to the citizens of Pitt County. Okay, so this month, May, we're holding budget workshops. Right. So why don't you talk about their importance in the budget process and what role do you play in those workshops? Okay, the budget workshops are held by the Board of Commissioners annually. They're held in the month of May, like you mentioned. The budget workshops really set the tone for what's gonna be included in the budget. Prior to that, all the department heads within the organization have submitted their requests to me as manager that then are translated to the Board of Commissioners in a composite budget. The budget workshops are really an opportunity for me to explain and lay out to the board in a composite manner everything that will be included in the comprehensive budget. At the budget workshops, there are certain department heads who are asked to come and present, mainly those who are elected, such as the sheriff, um, several appointed human service agency heads, such as our health director, Dr. John Morrow. 
So the budget workshops, at the end of them, we'll know pretty much what the board would like included in the overall operating budget. You know, keep in mind that budget is a $200 million budget, so it's a very large um, budget in essence. So from those budget workshops, we then prepare the final operating budget for the county. That's presented back to the board and then to the public through a public hearing, and we hold that public hearing in June. And that's really where the public has an opportunity to come in and have a say in the budget. Through the public hearing, they get to sign up and they can say that they like what they've heard the, you know, through the televised workshops or what's been in the, the print media or news media, or they can come in and say that they don't like something or they can come in and say that we've missed something. You know, why are we not funding this or that or, or that type of thing? So there are a lot of people who play a part in the budget process from your department heads to your chief financial officer, but ultimately you're the budget administrator. Talk Correct. about your role as that budget administrator. My role as budget officer, I deliver a budget, a balanced budget to the, to the board of commissioners. That bal balanced budget has to have revenues such as property tax revenues, sales tax revenues, fees and such that are equal to the amount of expenditures so that we have a balanced budget. We can't go forward without it being balanced. That then will become the operating platform for the county for beginning of the year on July 1st, running through June 30th of the following year. So this coming year we'll be looking at a 2014 through 2015 operating budget. Okay, so um, during the budget process you hear the term revenue neutral. Can sure. you talk about what that means? Well, revenue neutral is really a term that's used in a year in which we are reevaluating all the property values in Pitt County. The last time we did that was 2014. So through reval, if all of the property values in Pitt County were to go up, we have to render to the board a property tax rate that would be equal to as if those as if the revenues had not gone up per se. So if the current rate is 70 cents and the values went up a certain X percent that tax rate should come down to equal that, that difference. Got it. So in this year, we won't be worrying about a revenue neutral rate or next year, but in 2016, we will be. Okay, so previously you talked about the public hearing that we have that's open to the citizens. Can you talk about why it's important for citizens to be involved in the budget process? Well, it's important because they ultimately will be receiving the tax bill. Whether you're a property owner or whether you live in an apartment, um, obviously people who, who are apartment dwellers are not going to get a property tax bill, but they do pay taxes indirectly through their rent. So it's important that people be tuned in to know, A, what they're going to pay, and B, what are the services, what are the service levels, whether it's a restaurant inspection, whether it's a, a sheriff's deputy on the road, whether it's a planner in the, the um, planning department, whether it's a tax revenue technician, whether it's a social worker, a public health nurse, a public information officer, the, the list goes on and on in terms of what level of service we will provide to the citizens of Pitt County. So this is your first time as a featured guest on PCR. Um, thank you so much for coming by. But I did want to give an opportunity to address the Pitt County citizens. What would you say to them about Pitt County government? I would say that um, Pitt County government is a well-run organization. I think it is um, that is evidenced through uh, the, the tenure of staff and the, the longevity of our Board of Commissioners. I think that shows that the public has confidence in the, um, the way county government is being ran. And um, I would like to think um, that with 12 years experience as the board's appointed manager that they're in the management team we have um, helping facilitate and operate the, the organization here, that it just shows the, the, the strength of our organization. You say you've been here for 12 years and you've helped see Pitt County through an economic downturn. Yes. So what would you say um, our outlook is now financially and what steps are we taking to maintain a positive outlook? Well, our outlook now, and let's look at our outlook past. If we look at our, how we performed financially during the recession, um, yes, we lost jobs. Yes, we gained jobs. Yes, we had um, losses of revenue and we scrambled to, to make up those losses without raising property taxes and ha having the, the, the public shoulder that. We, um, we believe we fared pretty well through the recession. We realized that, that those who lost a job or maybe lost a home individually have a different outlook and aspect on that. But when you look at from a global or aggregate level of, of the entire county, and you compare us against other metropolitan areas in North Carolina, uh, we've seen data that shows that actually Pitt County fared better than almost all if 
or most if not all of the other similar sized counties or metro areas. Moving forward, I think that we're well positioned for um, continued growth. We, you know, we've had a growth even during the recession in the areas of education, healthcare, um, some and a little bit in, in industry, but now that we are um, out of the recession and that we are, the economy is starting to, to come back slowly, I think we are well positioned to see the county grow in all the areas, again, healthcare, education, industry, retail, housing, you know, Pitt County is, our motto is to be um, a leader in the state and the best in the east, and I believe that we do that and that we'll continue to, to do that. And this county will continue to grow. We're 175,000 um, citizens strong. Um, back in 2010, we were probably 100 and... Um, 168, I think. Yeah, 168, or going back to the year 2000, we we're, I think, at like probably about 132, so 132,000. So we'll continue to grow. I, I believe that a growth that is um, incremental and gradual is better than growth that is fast and furious because if the economy were to take another slight dive or, or decrease, it's easier to, um, to recover, I think, from a, a growth that is incremental and it's the growth that builds upon each step of the way rather than, than it's very quick growth. So can you talk about your relationship, the county manager's relationship with the board of commissioners? Well, the, the manager's relationship with the board, um, as I'd stated at the beginning, I'm appointed by the board, so I work at their pleasure. So it, it is my, um, is my role to interact with the board as a whole, all, all nine members, but also I interact individually with each board member too. So it's, it's, a, um, it's a role in which you are trying to facilitate individual wants and needs and desires for things to be um, effectuated or to, to see things come forward. But at the end of the day, it's always what is the will of the majority of the board. You have nine members, what's you know, five votes carries carries a, a, um, a motion. So you want to make sure that the, the board members are heard. You want to make sure that if they have an agenda item that they want to be placed on the agenda, that it can be vetted out with the entire board, and then give the board a chance to, um, to vote on the matter and to decide whether to go forward or not. All right. So not everyone wants to be a politician or an activist, but it's still important for them to be involved in their, their local government. How would you encourage Pitt County citizens to come involved, to become involved? You can become involved in Pitt County government without having to run for elected office and run a campaign and, and be on TV and be in the limelight. You can serve on a commission or a committee. The county has 40 to 50 different committees, everything from the Board of Adjustment to Planning Board to DSS, Health, Mental Health, um, you name it. We, we, we have a nursing home um, advisory um, group that goes out. So if, if you'd really like to get your feet wet and learn about county government would be to, to submit an application to serve on a, a board or a committee and learn what a specific focus or area is and, and then see if you want to go further from that. And those boards and commissions are actually listed on our website at pitcountync.gov. That's correct. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for stopping by, Scott. I know you're extremely busy, you. you know, managing the county, but thank you so much for joining thank us you. today. I appreciate it. If you'd like to learn more about the role the Office of County Manager plays in your local government, you can check out that page on our website by clicking on the Departments and Services link. We'll be right back to answer some of your emails in just a moment. Wake up and brighten your day with the most up-to-date information from Pitt County Government, delivered right to your phone or personal media device. It's the Pitt County Twitter page, your personal source for news, videos, and pictures from all things related to Pitt County Government. Follow us to stay informed about the latest Board of Commissioners meetings. Learn about upcoming events. You can even get a sneak preview of award-winning Pitt TV video. It's all here and waiting for you on the Pitt County Twitter page. In life-threatening emergencies, first responders depend on accurately identified roads to get the needed fire, police, or medical response you may need to your home. What some may think of as a souvenir could be a lifesaver to others. If you have found a stolen street sign or know of an intersection that is missing one, please call the Pitt County Planning and Development Department because the next life that needs saving could be your own. 
Here at the Office of Public Information, it's our job to inform you of and connect you with the many services offered by your county government. Each month on PCR, we do our part to help make that connection by answering some of your most commonly asked questions in our regular segment we call Citizen Emails. Rob emailed, could you provide me with info as to how to compete in the Pitt County Senior Olympics, such as where to register, how to qualify, where it happens, and when it happens? Well, Rob, you can contact Community Schools and Recreation at 902-1975. Good luck. Douglas emailed, please forward to the correct department as I am not certain where to send this request. There is a deer carcass located on Ivy Road and we are requesting that it be picked up. Thanks. Well, Douglas, please contact the North Carolina Department of Transportation at 830-3142. Thanks so much. Lastly, Laura wanted to know, I have old oral thermometers. Where can I dispose of them? Well, Laurel, thermometers are accepted at the transfer station located on Allen Road. And here are a couple of our latest tweets that have been retweeted or favorited. Knock, knock. Find out why closed sessions are used in county government and how they apply to public officials. And annual adult days of summer event begins June 2nd at Loretta's Frozen Yogurt. Animal Shelter hoping to place more pets in forever homes. 902-1725. Do you have a question or comment? Then why not let us know? Just go to our website at pittcountync.gov and click on the Contact Us link at the top of the page. While you're there, you can find valuable information about government services offered, meeting schedules, and there's even a link to Pitt TV. Stick around. We'll be right back. Beautiful weather is here, and a new season is in bloom. Need proof? Then why not see for yourself at the Pitt County Arboretum? Come tour the many gardens that demonstrate what can easily be done with your own yard. See the beautiful flowers and seasonal plants. Even pick up a few tips through Master Gardener volunteer training. The Arboretum is located at 403 Government Circle in Greenville and is open from sunup to sundown daily. Office hours and restrooms are available Monday through Friday from 8 a.m. to 5 p.m. To learn more about the Arboretum, just visit their website or call 902-1701. Welcome back. One of the most visible ways Pitt County services citizens is through the efforts of first responders such as paramedics and sheriff's deputies. Recently, the Office of Public Information helped to create a training video which brought these two worlds just a little closer together. PCR was there for the press conference that introduced this new life-saving program. Too many times we arrive on the scene where we find a loved one in respiratory distress from a drug overdose. We have many stories we can tell. We arrive on the scene, we actually find a patient with a needle in their arm or a very young person you shouldn't be laying there suffering from a cardiac arrest. The first thing we ask, what's going on? Although there was a good crowd on hand to witness the public launch at the May 1st press conference, the life-saving tool that was the subject of the meeting was already being put to work. The kits are actually already deployed to our patrol deputies, and we're continuing that initiative throughout the week and into next week to uh, make sure we encompass all of the law and sworn law enforcement officers, including the detention center and contract medical staff at the detention center as well. If there is one thing that can bring this many agencies together in such a short amount of time, it's the prospect of being able to save lives. Saving the lives of potential opioid overdose victims is the sole purpose of the drug naloxone commonly referred to as Narcan. What Narcan essentially does is blocks the, re the receptors. The drug does not leave the body once a person overdoses or becomes an overdose state, but what this medication does is blocks the way that it communicates with the brain. So as the receptors bind to the brain to place a body into a, re into a um, respiratory distress or a respiratory arrest situation as a result of a drug overdose, this actually forms a wall, if you will, to uh, prevent that from happening. As demonstrated in this training video produced by the Office of Public information, sheriff's deputies often find themselves as first responders to victims in various stages of drug overdose. When seconds are critical to survival, waiting for medical personnel may not be an option. That's where the Narcan kit, with its easy-to-use nasal applicator, can make the difference in a life-or-death scenario. 
In the fall of 2013, we were approached by Chris Smith, who is the uh, Chronic Pain Initiative Care for North Carolina. And their initiative was to deploy uh, naloxone kits or Narcan kits within the community uh, with the intent to reduce the number of deaths associated with a drug overdose. And along with that, uh, there was more of a drive to focus on our first responders. And so with the change in the North Carolina legislative law, which occurred in April of 2013, it allowed law enforcement officers as first responders to possess the kits and be able to administer the medication as well under the supervision of a licensed physician and that person is Dr. Jeff Ferguson who's the medical director for Pitt County EMS. One of the things that we you know really supportive about is there's a multitude of ways that you can give uh, naloxone or, or, or Narcan but uh, we chose the simplest method for our deputies and the safest methods as well. According to advocates like Diane Cardin Glenn, a board member with the North Carolina Harm Reduction Coalition, that simple method could be all that is needed to save the lives of people just like her son, Michael, who died of an overdose in 2012. A few years ago, Michael called me and asked for my social security number. He said he was making his life insurance policy payable to me. We talked a bit about what that meant and the conversation turned to what he would want me to do for him if that were to happen. And what he told me was to do what I thought was best <clears throat> to remember who he was and where he came from, what his dreams were, but whatever I did and whatever decision I made would be to support change. Whether someone is fighting an addiction or has simply taken the wrong medication, the change that advocates like Glenn and the NCHRC are bringing about in North Carolina's law books are already starting to show positive results. The intent of the program is to utilize Narcan kits and with our patrol deputies to save lives of the citizens of Pitt County. So as individuals who either accidentally or intentionally abuse uh, pharmaceutical drugs that have opioids that are, uh, that are in the medications, the use of this uh, particular program will reduce those deaths. It's already proven to do that uh, in Wilkes County, North Carolina, where a study was done in 2007. And they saw a 68% increase in the number of reversals with the use of uh, Narcan in the field. Since Pitt County is one of the first counties in eastern North Carolina to implement the program, the goal is to set a benchmark for our area to help convince surrounding communities to join in as well, something most all involved agree is a good idea. I thank you for taking the lead in this initiative, and I thank you from all the mothers and fathers who will not have to grieve the loss of a child or a loved one because you have given them a second chance. Thank you. Volunteers are a team of professionals that serve with dedication and are counted on to protect lives and property. Being a volunteer means having the opportunity to protect the homes and lives of your neighbors. Pitt County needs you. Consider becoming a volunteer firefighter. Never miss another Pitt TV program again. View it all with Peg Central at pittv.pegcentral.com. This is Pitt TV. Empower you. We hope you've enjoyed this special episode of PCR and hope that we've inspired you to learn more about the people and services who make up your county government. We want to thank County Manager Scott Elliott for taking time out of his very busy schedule to talk with us about his role in the day-to-day -day operations of the county. Stay tuned for our next episode when we'll discuss the important roles libraries play in our community. Until then, don't forget to check us out on your favorite social media sites such as YouTube, Twitter, and Flickr. Just do a search for Pitt County Government. From all of us here at PCR and the Office of Public Information, thanks so much for watching. <laughs>